he's going to focus his discussion on bringing together a community to maintain a positive town and gown relationship while trying to keep the area vibrant and lively to students, residents, and attract visitors. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll help me welcome Rob Schmidt. In my role as uh, executive director of downtown State College, I'm responsible for working with Penn State, the borough of State College, students, townspeople, property owners, business owners, various stakeholders to find common ground as we navigate through a dramatic time of change. Not just the uh, skyline, the streetscape, um, but also the changes in retail and the changes in habits in downtown America. Now, please don't be fooled by the fact that I have the longest bio in the, in the program. I realized I'm by far the oldest speaker here today. So, I uh, graduated from Penn State in 1982. Um, Beaver Stadium had 78,000 uh, capacity. And yes, we all chanted we are. We did not know the words the alma mater, so we actually made up our own words. How many of, your, how many of you had parents who went to Penn State? Wow, quite a few, quite a few. Ask them what those words were. I'm sure they talk, by the way, about how things have changed, right? And they talk about how great things were then. But also in 1982, we won the national championship. I was very much involved with THON and remain that way uh, to this day. We uh, were in the spacious white building and raised a whopping $150,000 for this tiny little fledging charity called the Four Diamond Fund. I was also very active and interesting listening to John's talk, very much active in Greek life and, uh, and was a member of my fraternity. And to this day, my fraternity brothers remain uh, the best friends uh, I've ever had. But um, after growing up in State College and going to Penn State, I really um, was anxious to leave town. Uh, don't get me wrong, the four years I spent as a student, actually correct that, my five years that I spent as a student eh, at Penn State uh, were among the best years of my life. But it was time to move on. I needed to find myself. So, um, moved to Connecticut, got married to uh, my college sweetheart from Penn State, and started a career in the broadcast and um, cable business. And ironically, after seven years of working in Connecticut at a radio station there, my radio stations were sold, and um, it, the company Eastern Broadcasting decided it was time to transfer me. And guess where they chose to transfer me? back to State College. So even though I really never thought I'd ever return, I came back. And it's interesting when you leave a place and come back. You gain a totally different perspective of the area you lived in, a very different perspective of home. One of my favorite quotes comes from T.S. Eliot, and I want you to read it. Because for me, it speaks to the experience that I had. I had to move away and come back to know State College and Penn State for the very first time. I now looked at it through a totally different lens. I had left here out of college, going to the bars, hanging out with my fraternity brothers, came back a 30-year-old husband, father of a young baby girl, I now was looking at State College through a totally different lens. And I realized what makes State College one of the greatest college towns in America. Here's a few of them. One of the best places to raise a family. Great school district, uh, great community, 
Um, I was very proud that my kids graduated from the same high school I did. Also proud that my daughter became the fourth generation Penn Stater in our family. My son went to this tiny little school in Annapolis called Naval Academy, so uh, he broke the trend. But um, very proud of both my kids. It's one of the best places to retire. Retirees are coming back here. It's also considered one of the safest places in the USA. It's one of the safest metropolitan areas, one of the safest college towns. What makes a great college town? I'll tell you one thing is, everybody I talk to, the, my, among my peers, are envious that town borders gown. That doesn't happen everywhere. College Avenue runs the gamut from, from college to the business district to town. Uh, but the key to the success and the continued success of State College and Penn State is having a vibrant community for all. We need an economy that thrives on, on students, on visitors, and the townspeople. So how do we maintain that appeal in a time of large change, all these large buildings coming up? Um, and I call it the really college town conundrum. Because as I talk to various locals, from young adults to retirees, empty nesters, um, and talk to students, it's quite apparent to me that the same issues you have are not necessarily the same issues that we have. For example, earlier this week, I was talking to a group, we had a focus group, talking about some of the things that people, the townspeople complain about. One is lack of shopping. Well, a couple things have happened over the years. In the last 20, 25 years, we've had big box stores move to the suburban areas where they're more accessible. And um, so it's just natural. The online phenomenon that's really been the last eight to 10 years of people shopping online has really been a threat to retail and is a real threat to downtown retail that wants to appeal to the visitors and the locals and don't necessarily appeal to you. Moyer Jewelers is a recent example. Prime location right on the corner, 60 some years uh, going out of business. So we need to work to buck that trend. We used to have two department stores. Uh, 1996, G.C. Murphy's department store closed. It's now the site of Champs downtown. People complain about parking, which is a relative misconception. There's plenty of parking, particularly if you're willing to park in the garage. And they complain that there's too many students. Well, guess what? We wouldn't be a college town without all of you. So if we don't build downtown, you're going to see more retreats and other, um, as you're seeing, construction going all the way down uh, around town. And one of the reasons for the construction boom is we've really operated with a shortage of student housing for the last 10, 15 years. So the construction boom is only natural. We're going to have roughly, when it's all said and done, uh, nearly 3,000 more students living downtown. The rise, of course, recently opened. Here's the standard. This is the um, building that is being uh, built at the corner of College and Atherton Street, right across from the Metropolitan. As you can see here, the first two floors are retail, which is one of the requirements of building um, in, um, in downtown that you have to build two floors of commercial space. And one of the challenges is what's going to go in there that can appeal to locals and adults, or locals and students. I, I'm not sure about all these one-word one names, but this one is the one that perplexes me. <laughs> Anybody who knows Abbott and Costello's, who's on first? Uh, 
This is the project on Garner Street. It's called Here. Where do you live? I live here. Okay. Um, the first, uh, the, the, the tallest uh, section, it's two parts. The tallest section is expected to open in fall of 2020. The front section is the current uh, site of uh, Family Clothesline and uh, the um, Dante's restaurants, uh, so, uh, which includes Inferno, Liberty Craft. They may relocate, they may rebuild afterwards, but the second phase won't start till uh, after the first phase is completed. But next fall uh, is the target date for here to open. What's happened with that? What, one is a benefit to you. If in the past, in the not too short past, if you didn't have an apartment for fall, you, by today, you were pretty well screwed, right? <laughs> all right, I'm sorry, you were out of luck. Um, but that's all changed. The, we've gone from a shortage of student housing to now a surplus of student housing. And even here in downtown, we are encouraging a lot of our older units in Beaver Canyon to, uh, to renovate, to keep up the standards so that they can keep uh, their properties rented. In spite of all these changes, when I talk to my peers, and I'm going to be down in Raleigh this week for a, a conference hosted by uh, NC State, North Carolina, and Duke, they, they're envious of State College. They'd like to be like us. So we're often compared to other college towns, so here's a couple. Here's a couple examples, different examples. Austin, great city, but it's a city. Several weeks ago, I got a call from my counterpart in Austin who uh, oversees what's called uh, West Campus. Uh, they have a serious crime problem there. Uh, I have a niece who's a senior at UT, and uh, she complains about how unsafe she feels living in West Campus. So despite the great ambiance of Austin, the great music and everything else, they have their problems. The, the college town that people bring up to me more than any, any other, uh, Dr. Barron would love to be like Boulder, okay? He would love to see a Pearl Street, a pedestrian mall. Uh, unfortunately, that is somewhat challenging uh, the way we're landlocked, but this summer we are going to be potentially Borough Council approves it, do a temporary pilot for a pedestrian mall in, uh, on the 100 block of Allen Street. Um, so if you're around this summer, be looking for that. What are some of the other things we'd like to do to improve downtown around all this construction? One is, anybody been to Westchester? Great food, great dining uh, from May through September. They have great outdoor dining. We'd like to create more outdoor dining, uh, even more than we have now. Here's my number one, number one wish list project, and it's very expensive, so the borough will need to borrow a significant amount of money, but Calder Way. To me, Calder Way has the biggest amount of potential to really uh, improve the walkability the bikeability, everything about one end to the other of downtown. This is a depiction of the current state. This is a depiction of what it might look like. Bike friendly, walkability, uh, perhaps even uh, create some redevelopment for some smaller shops, smaller cafes. So if I could convince the borough to do one thing, it would be to do Calder Way. And there is some discussion of potentially doing it in 2021, 2022, to create that pedestrian walkway. It wouldn't be full time, it would probably be about 10, 10 in the morning or so. So finally, why is this important to you? What is important to you? I often forget that while I've been here a long time, your perspective for a lot of you students is just the time you've been here, less than four years, right? So what's important to you now? What kind of downtown do you want? 
but more importantly, what kind of downtown do you want to have when you're an alumnus and you come back in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and you too, like me, will see State College and Penn State through a totally different lens. Thank you.